Oh, I'm an artist. I live on an island 30 miles out to sea. I love what I do and where I live. Many who visit, they often ask me, how do you make a living? And I simply respond by saying, anybody who lives here year-round, we're very resourceful, with a dash of hardiness. And the next question is usually, what type of artist are you? And then I tell them, well, take your pick. I'm a fine artist. I do oil, pen and ink, cartography. I do design, interiors, decorative painting, murals, textiles, anything that gets my creative juices going, and I love it. After the last two years, I came to realize that I can identify with being a pioneer, pioneer artist. Uh huh. I love to forge new trails in my studio, and I use a variety of tools. I love anything that's new and challenges me. And I guess I'm kind of like my ancestor, Davy Crockett. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My family traces back to Davy Crockett. But I have another relative I want to tell you about, my great aunt, Flora Crockett. Aunt Flora was my dad's aunt on his mother's side of the family. They had a very close relationship, and Flora influenced my dad to explore all kinds of creative aspects of his life. And I realize now how fortunate I was to have the two of them in my own professional life as an artist, and even more thankful to call them family. Flora Crockett was also a pioneer woman of her own time. She was an amazing lady, raised in Ohio farm country, she graduated from college in 1911 with a focus in arts and math. In 1912, Flora headed off to Detroit on her own uh -huh, to further fine-tune her skills in pursuit of her career in becoming an artist. She landed a great position as a supervisor of art at Roslyn Public Schools in New York. Life was really opening up for her. She had a brilliant mind, and she utilized engineering and design along with her art. It was not your typical path for a woman in the early 1900s. Being the hot ticket that Flora was, she met, fell in love, and married Edmondo Catrocchi. Edmondo was the perfect match for Flora at the time. He was an accomplished sculptor. He had attended Cooper Union and the Art Students League in New York. The two of them were perfect complements for each other. Flora worked alongside her husband, creating designs and mechanical drawings. And I think I imagine Edmondo inspiring Flora as well to bring her artwork to new levels. And she did. During this time, Flora further developed her design and engineering skills, drafting concepts for automobiles, furniture, textile design, and even movable toys. But a collaborative project that Flora and Edmondo developed together was called the pointing machine. This is like a pentagraph for sculpture. This machine allowed for the reproduction of sculpture in the same and different scales. It was the forerunner to 3D printing. Pretty amazing. And once the couple had a final working product, Edmondo filed a patent for his invention, giving absolutely no credit to Flora. Flora was an incredibly smart woman, and she knew all too well how to maneuver the man's world at the time. She often told me, pick your battles to win the war, but more importantly, one can copy what you do, but they can't copy how you think. In 1924, the couple moved to France. By 1926, Flora became involved at the Académie Moderne. This is where all the leading artists at the time were teaching. Fernand Léger and Admiros Infant were among the best known. Léger had created a form of cubism which he gradually modified into more of a figurative populist style. His boldly simplified treatment of modern subject matter has caused him to be regarded as a forerunner of pop art. You can see his influence in Flora's earlier works. She was in very good company, being recognized in a very male-dominated world. Flora was trailblazing with the best of them in Paris, and she was on a trajectory path becoming a prominent female artist in Europe. By now, she was the director of the Academy Moderne and had received the Bronze Prize in painting at the Paris World Expo in 1937. I often wonder what her life would have been like if it were not for World War II. Flora, along with so many others, had fled France before Nazi Germany invaded. 
Flora and Edmondo had ended their marriage. She left France and returned to New York. Everything changed. But Flora arrived in New York armed with credentials. She had letters from Leger and the director of the American University in Paris, as well as the director of the Foreign Service, who wrote personally to the director of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They all stated volumes about her skill and experience as an artist and director. I remember visiting Flora in her apartment. All her artwork was turned against the walls, and she didn't want any of us to see it at any time until it was ready. Aunt Flora died when I was 19 years old. My dad kept her letters and paintings and said to me, we will do something with this one day when the time is right. So I grew up, I left upstate New York, I went to New York City, and I went to Pratt Institute. I lived in New York for many years, developing my design career and my art career. I even had a TV show. And I completely forgot about Flora's paintings. As I lived my life, I fell in love, married my husband, Mike, and made Nantucket our home. And as life happens, I lost both my parents in 2013. It was during the sorting of all our parents' belongings. And I took a break. I just couldn't take it anymore. I strolled into the barn, and I started looking around. I noticed what seemed to be paintings visible amongst all the stuff that was in there. As I carefully looked through the paintings to see what I could see, it was like saying hello to old friends. Here were Flora's paintings. As irony would have it, I still couldn't see all the details in all the paintings. So before I moved them, I decided to contact my friend, an Nantucket antique dealer, Jack Fritz. It was just a real lovely experience to be able to go into that farmhouse. Uh, but amongst the antiques were these really wild paintings. They were modern, didn't really quite fit in with what else was there. Uh, so when I asked, I was very interested, and she said that this is actually her aunt. And the next room, you run into another and another. So I ask more about her, and she tells me about her aunt Flora, and we're a fascinating history. And she told me, well, if you like these, there's more in the barn. And that worried me because I, I had seen the barn when I first got there, and it was you know, like a, a good old mountain Swiss cheese barn with you know, holes, exposure to weather. Um, rain had obviously been in a lot. It was a, a great condominium for critters. Um, and I thought if there's paintings out there, they're, there's no way. They're, they've been destroyed over the decades. And I was expecting a handful. They were, it was huge. There were like hundreds of these paintings all packed, crammed really tightly into these, into these holders, these bins. Um, I was amazed. It was like the silver lining in the dark cloud, thinking that maybe, just maybe, Flora would finally get the credit that she deserves. There were over 200 paintings, along with the letters and awards that any artist would be proud to have obtained. We took all the paintings out of the barn, and as we did this, I had several emotions. Excitement, astonishment, fear. Now what do I do? Where do I go with this? While the direction became clear, I packed them up and brought them home to Nantucket. When Mary told me this story, the florist story, I found it fascinating but I didn't know how I would react to the work. When I saw the images, I was really impressed. They're really fine. They're really beautiful. And uh, my husband and I live in New York, and we happen to collect American modernist paintings, which is right around Flora's time. So I knew a dealer who I thought was perfect, Meredith Ward. She's reputable. Uh, this is the kind of thing she, 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 she does. She likes to discover, quote-unquote, new artists. And she's a beautiful gallery on the Upper East Side. So really, all I did was make the connection. What is amazing to me is the constant stream of wealth our little island has. Now, I'm not talking about billion-dollar homes. I am talking about the professional people with integrity who live among us. If I had stayed in New York City... I doubt I would have been able to get this far in this short a time. Old friend or fellow islander, it's what we do here. We help each other and offer a vast array of expertise and kindness. And that's why I live here as an artist. Flora Crockett, just in case you're listening, all women artists that hear your story will applaud you trailblazing to live your life the way that you wanted 
and you used your gifts to the fullest capacity.